She was just 10 years old when a deranged loner snatched her off the street. Natasha Kampusch was held captive in the cellar of a suburban house in Vienna, purpose-built by her kidnapper. She suffered eight years of physical and mental abuse at the hands of Wolfgang Pricklepill, a computer technician, before making a daring escape. Now, in a bizarre twist in this story, Natasha has become the proud owner of the House of Horrors, where she was imprisoned. Here's Rani Sadler. Natasha Kampusch is taking me to the house where she was held captive for 3,096 days. Here's the Behörden, Natasha Kampusch. How are you feeling now that we are headed back to the house? I think it's not, um, not easy to go there. The first time Natasha came here, she was 10 years old, in the back of a kidnapper's van. Now 28, she's taking me inside her house of horrors. Are you feeling okay coming in here? I'm fine, how are you? I'm awesome. Me too. It's been a long journey for you. Yes. It's been 10 years. Yes. Yes. Now, here is the living room. It's bizarre enough being in this house with Natasha. Even stranger, she now owns it after inheriting it from the estate of her kidnapper. So is going back for you, in some ways, therapy? <gasps> yes. You can say it's in, in, in a special way, you can say that. This is the house of Wolfgang Pricklepill, an unmarried IT specialist who kept an immaculate facade. For eight and a half years, Natasha was hidden inside, where she was relentlessly abused and kept as a slave. He needed the house to be clean all the time. Yes, it and was very important for him. And who did the cleaning? Me. I was under his thumb, and now I'm not. March 2nd, 1998 didn't start out like most days for 10-year-old Natasha. Her mother usually drove her to school, but because they'd had a fight, Natasha decided to walk alone. As she headed towards her school, a monster blocked her path. He grabbed me and threw me through the open door into his delivery van. The whole thing had only taken a few seconds. I was well aware of the fact that I had been kidnapped and that I would probably die. Wonderful you. This. Underneath was the dungeon. Pricklepill had planned this moment for a long, long time. Over years, he'd painstakingly dug out an inescapable dungeon deep below his house. Down the cellar stairs, covered by heavy tires and a cupboard, behind a safe and then a wall half a metre thick and a door weighing 150 kilograms to the five square metre cell that would be Natasha's prison. Did you think you were going to die in that cellar? Sometimes I thought that and I made an agreement with myself to, to cope with this during a nationwide search, police received a tip-off about a man with a white van and an unhealthy interest in young girls. While Natasha lay imprisoned under the house, investigators came over to interview Wolfgang Pricklepill, who charmed them into believing he had nothing to do with her disappearance. He had two parts in his personality. I call the one part the dark side and the other, the other part the bright side. And it was like um, 
schizophrenic personality, maybe. What were the two different sides? I think one part was the part of the outside, the part uh, of the handsome person, um, the brave son and the dark side. He were a brutal person with no conscience. Natasha never knew when Priclopil would come for her. In her dungeon, alone for days on end, she developed psychological techniques which allowed her to survive. What was the secret to your survival all those years? I think I had this kind of hope and I had this kind of strength in it. And it helped me a lot. It was very important to me to have this inner strength and the hope and the belief that I will survive. Eventually, Priclopil began keeping Natasha upstairs where he forced her to sleep in his bed. He would actually attach you to him yeah. all day. Sometimes because he don't want me to um, get out of this house. During the day, he used her as a domestic slave and withheld food as punishment. He also didn't feed you so you would not be strong enough to run away. Yes, that was that was the idea. He he gave me um, one carrot or something for two days or more, and then I had to go back in the darkness. You feared that if something happened to him, you would just be like one of the mummies in Egypt. Yes and there were no exit for me. So if something happened to him... <sighs> Don't let me think about it. It's still very, very difficult for you to think yes. about. As he abused her, she tried to manipulate him. She feigned love for her captor, and in return, he began making concessions. Under constant watch, Natasha was sometimes allowed out into the garden. To look above in the sky, in the clouds, to view the plants. And you would take some of the plants with you? Yes. The garden would not only provide emotional salvation for Natasha, it would also give her a means of escape. On August 23rd, 2006, she made her move. Priclopil had left the gate unlocked and was distracted for a moment by a phone call, just long enough for Natasha to escape and run to safety. But Wolfgang Priclopil was never brought to justice. He committed suicide by throwing himself under a train. You said nothing is black and white and while you were the victim and he was the abuser, but you think in some ways he must have been a victim too of yeah. something. Yes, I think uh, a normal man wouldn't be able to do this. He had, I'm sure he had uh, problems and with, with his self and with his personality and he was a victim too, I think. Taking advice from police, she agreed to her first TV interview two weeks mm, after yeah. her escape. But her mental fortitude caused some to doubt her story. Natasha. And over the years, those doubts have continued to plague Natasha. Wasn't it enough that I was kidnapped? Wasn't it enough? They want a bigger story. I think it's horrible. How does it make you feel when people don't Angry. believe you? Angry. And it hurts. And it's this ongoing scrutiny that makes Natasha so protective of her past and so reluctant to sell this house. 
People wonder why you would come here, why you would keep it, why is it important for you? It's important because I don't want to have the false people in this house. What do you mean by that? You don't want other people to... I don't through. want to have a, team, a kind of theme park in here. A theme park. theme park? You don't want it to become like a theme park. Yes. Ten years on, she still cleans it from top to bottom. Everything except the dungeon. The council made you fill it in. Yes, they made me do that. You did not want to do it? Not so fast. But in the future, maybe yes. Why not just burn it down? I'm looking um, to sell it, maybe. But it's, I'm not sure, but I will see. For Natasha, who's still trying to find out how she fits in the world outside, her former prison is a place of refuge, a place of familiarity. I have found freedom in myself and I'm very centered now. Lots of people think they, that such a crime could never happen to them but it isn't true. Natasha's new book about her ordeal and her life since the escape is called 10 Years of Freedom. Details are on our website and Facebook.